Good morning. Got some projects to do on this old uh, more jig bore, which is a really interesting machine. So they uh, check the level out. Uh, it, it looks pretty good right there. Yeah, I think you can see that bobble. Uh, let's look over here. Oh, maybe it's not as good as we thought. Hmm. Yeah, one says it's good. <laughs> of course, this is a stare at master precision level. This is the level you should use. Okay. Now, why is that important, that much difference? You know, why is that not good enough? Well, one of the reasons with this machine is it's eight feet tall. And uh, if it's a little bit out of level, Oh, the column is bolted right right back in here, right down here, you see. So if it's at a level, it's going to stretch. And then it's going to throw the uh, spindle out of tram with the table. So what, what I'm going to do is uh, we're gonna, I'm going to level the machine. Uh, it, it sits on three points, uh, one of the points being right at the front. There's some uh, bolt-down holes on the sides, and you don't use those. Those are only for transport. It sits on three points. So it's fairly easy to level. You know, you just pry this 4,000-pound machine up at those points with a bar and slip shims in or wedge or whatever you got to do. Now, one of the things that's different about this machine from a bridge port is uh, the, the table, when you move it, I'll, I'll move the table. And uh, I'll get over here and show the handle. You see, when you move the table, the handle stays right there. And it's the table that moves on top of the casting. And uh, this casting, it, it, it um, or the, I, I suppose this is the saddle casting, see? So the table is always supported, and it's never overhangs. It's just always supported. And then the bottom here is uh, flat weights and box weights. And uh, that is just really solid, too. And one of the interesting things about a jig bore, and I'll point that out right now, is uh, the locking the table. Now, on a Bridgeport milling machine, when you turn the lock down, it squishes the gib in. And, and that's bad for uh, extreme accuracy that this machine is capable of. And so what we have here is this uh, thin piece of metal, and this is a clamp. So when you lock the, the table, you, you just clamp onto this uh, metal, and it's not, it's not squishing the gib or uh, deflecting the table in any way. Okay, so that's kind of one of the different things about a, about a jig bore. A, a pretty cool, pretty cool machine. And uh, the, uh, oh, the original purpose of the machine is pretty much gone. You know, that making jigs to put parts in, to slide down those long tables on multi-head drill presses. It's all done differently now. But the machine is still very useful for repair that i found. And I've got a great project. And uh, let, let's pan over to the great project. Yeah, look at that. That's an antique motorcycle engine right there. And it's about a 1953 Harley-Davidson K model flathead. Uh, this is uh, uh, basically like a Sportster, like the XLCH, uh, old Sportsters, but it's got flat heads, you know, and uh, this is a rare, uh, a rare engine. And years ago on an internet site, this guy, you know, I hope he's still around, called Hack of Saw. And a lot of people uh, scoffed at it, but uh, people don't actually do it. It'll take 80 hours of labor to make this engine nice. And I'm not kidding you, 80 hours. And uh, that's, you know, that's a lot of money and labor. So, you know, it's a serious project. But cool, you know, Elvis had one of these. So, you know it's cool.
<laughs> okay. So, what I gotta do is get this thing level with the master precision level and uh, then I'm going to tram it. I'm going to, well, I'm going to check the tram and uh, with a dial indicator from the spindle. And there's some differences in that and I will show you what those differences are. And uh, it's, this is uh, um, kind of some different methods than a regular uh, vertical milling machine like a bridge port. You just, you kind of do some different things. The um, a spindle tool in here uh, yeah that's that looks pretty good I'm gonna uh, it's retained by this square thread okay and so you put this up into the spindle and you turn it and it pulls itself in and uh, it, it <laughs> it's the weirdest uh, uh, kind of system and it's used on some internal grinding spindles and it's also used on the interchangeable arbors on the Rockwell uh, 1214 table saw. <laughs> One of the funny things about this, it, pu it pulls these shanks absolutely true. You can, uh, and it's quick change <laughs> too, but uh, you, uh, you fit each tool to the uh, spindle by lapping the shanks and it explains that in the manual for the machine and that way you got absolute repeatability you can you know you can have uh, boring heads or anything and pull them out and stick them in and they're exact and that's kind of a neat feature about this machine except for you can't run the machine in reverse. The machine has no reverse because, you know, the threads would unscrew that. It's just not, uh, not what they do. Okay, so I've got a few things to do, and uh, i got a, f a few small projects. I, I, I still have the, the lower clamp here for my uh, Pratt & Whitney Model C Steady Rest <laughs> Custom Fit to my baby Axelson lathe. And then i got to fix a screw in this uh, antique, uh, the 14th, number 200 uh, KDK tool post made. Yeah, no, it's in great shape. It's just a retaining screw. There's a little strip that I'm going to fix that. But oh, okay, so uh, that's good for now. And thanks for looking.